Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Minecraft Modding with Fabric series. In this episode, I'll be showing you how to set up a project manually. Baby, you give me ice and fire. You're giving me wind and rain. You're some kind of butterfly. Welcome back, everybody. So in the last episode, I showed you guys how to create a new fabric project using the Minecraft development plugin on IntelliJ. And hopefully you didn't have too much trouble with that. But in this episode, I want to show you guys how to do that all without the plugin. So we're going to be downloading a sample project provided by Fabric themselves and then configuring it to make it work how we want it to work. So I'll be showing you how to do that because not everyone wants to use the Minecraft development plugin. But anyway, so let's get started here. It's going to be a much more extensive process than what I showed you last episode, but it will also show you more of what's happening behind the scenes. But let's go ahead and see what happens. Here is the repository that I was talking about. So this is the fabric-example-mod project available from Fabric MC themselves. So they provide you this for the same reason that the Minecraft development plugin exists. It's so that you can get started really easily without having to set up Gradle and, you know, set up the dependencies and a bunch of crazy stuff that you don't want to have to do, right? So this will help us a lot. So there's two different ways to download this project, generally speaking. You can either grab the source code by downloading it as a zip file. That's one way you could do it. So download the zip and then extract it onto someplace on your computer. Or if you know how to use Git and GitHub and all that fun stuff, then you could just clone the project as a Git repository onto your computer. Now, I'm not going to show you guys how to download and extract a zip file. I'm assuming you know how to do that. So if that's the method that you want to go with, then do that real quick. But if you already have Git on your computer and you know how to open up a terminal, uh, just go ahead and copy this link here, the SSH link, or even this one if you want to. Just copy that and then open up a terminal onto your computer where you want your project to be. So I'm just going to find a safe spot for my project to live. All right, so this is where I want my project to be. So I'm going to right click, open in terminal. You can do that a different way if you know how. And what we're going to do is do git clone and then paste the link that you copied from GitHub. And what that will do is simply copy and paste the files onto your machine. So now if we go back here, we can see that it's now here. This is the actual project files that we got from here. Pretty cool, right? Now the next step is we have to configure this in the Gradle properties file that we have right here. So that's using the correct version of Fabric that we want it to be using. So to do that, go to this file here, right click it and then do open with, and then you can do whatever editor you want. Uh, I'm just gonna use Notepad++. So the first thing that we wanna change is the archives base name. So archives base name, this will essentially just be the name of your mod. So I'm just gonna call mine first mod, again, like I did last episode. So first mod, and then here we have the Maven group. So this is also the same as we did last episode at the very beginning, if you saw that. This will essentially be the base package for uh, Maven. So the convention is to do your website backwards. If you don't have a website, you can do something like me.cody Simpson. That's another uh, thing that you can do. And then you can set the mod version to whatever you want. That's your, uh, that's your uh, option right there. The next thing that we need to do is set these fabric properties here, these versions to the correct latest ones. So to do that, you're going to go to this link here. I have a link in the description below. And what you want to do is choose the Minecraft version that you want to support for your mod. So I'm going to do latest, which is 1.19.3. And I'm just going to copy these values here into that, that gradle.properties file for us, okay? So I'm going to simply take, so I'll simply take these three, go back here, and then paste them. Let me just fix the formatting real quick. I don't know if that matters or not, but I'll fix it anyway. And then for the Fabric API version, I will copy that and paste it here as well. Okay, so now we should have all the latest versions for our stuff. So just control S to save that file. I'm going to close it now. And now the next step is to open this file within our IDE of IntelliJ. So to do that, we're going to go to our IDE, file, open, and we're just going to find out where that is. So mine's in development and then in the test folder. So test and then fabric example mod. So you can just open it by the folder if you want to, or you can actually open it by the Gradle file as well. So it'll automatically do all the Gradle stuff right away. So I'm going to click that, click OK, open as project, trust it, this window. So now what that will do is begin the long process of loading everything in and installing whatever it needs to install, just loading dependencies and stuff like that. So give it a few minutes if you need to, and I'll be right back. Okay, everything is done. So what I'm going to do now is go up to file and then actually close the project and then reopen it so that it will actually include all of the run configuration stuff. And it should pop up here by default, Minecraft client or Minecraft server so that you can directly run the Minecraft client within your IDE as we saw in the last episode. Anyway, so the next step will be to go ahead and go to file, then go to project structure. And what we want to do is set the compiler output. So we just want to click this and then find where our project is located. So back in the test folder, boop, boop. And then I'm going to create a new folder called out. So new directory, out. And then I'm going to set this 
click it. And so I click apply now. And now any output should be in that folder. You have to set this for it to be able to do the stuff that it needs to do. So click OK. And that should be good now. So we need to do something else for Gradle now. So go to here. Go to settings. Gradle settings. Let that load. And then now where it says build and run using Gradle, change that to IntelliJ. According to the documentation, that should make it run faster. The next thing that we're going to do is generate the Minecraft sources, which is the source code of Minecraft itself. That's sort of been generated and mapped for you. And we're not going to actually be using this when we first start. It's going to be down the road as we learn how to read the source code. Um, but you want to actually generate it when you first start up. In this case, we have to do it ourselves. So just go to the Gradle tab, go to Fabric, click, uh, where is it, Gen Sources, and then right-click it and click Run. So that will do that process. So give that a couple minutes to do that. All right, that is done, looks great. So now what we have to do is configure our project, our mod project. So let's just open this up, take a look at what we got generated for us. All right, cool, so we got a basic example mod class just like we had before. Um, looks a little different, we have this mix-in uh, package here as well. So this is for things called mix-ins, which are something that we're not gonna be taking a look at right away. This is just provided for us in case we wanna do that. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is simply change the package here. It's using net.fabricmc.example. Obviously, we are not fabricmc, and so we want to change that to whatever makes sense for us. So it should be like me Cody Simpson dot, and then our mod name, right? So I'm just going to right-click this and do refactor, rename, and we'll do exactly what I said, but do one that makes sense for you, of course. So me Cody Simpson dot first mod. Boop. There we go. So that will refactor that for us. And also we're gonna change the name of the class here. So refactor, rename. So example mod, we're gonna change this to first mod. Okay, so now we've customized it to be what we want, which kind of makes sense, right? But if you look inside this file, we see that we have a we have a logger set up for us automatically, which is pretty cool, as well as this uninitialized method calling that logger to output a message by default, which is also very cool. And we see here that we have a mod ID provided into the logger, and we want to change this to an actual mod ID. So last episode, I told you what a mod ID is. If you missed that, a mod ID is simply a unique identifier for your mod. You want to have it as basically lowercase uh, letters and numbers and also dashes and underscores. So those are the different types of characters that you can use, but you want to keep it as simple as possible, but unique so that your mod can be uniquely identified from other mods. Okay, so we're going to call ours first mod. This is probably not unique. There's probably other mods called first mod, but obviously this is just for testing. We're just going to run it solo, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. So this is just one place where the mod ID will be provided. We have to make sure that anywhere that it says mod ID, that's where we're going to put the mod ID that we came up with in this instance, okay? So if you look here, we can see that assets dot mod ID is something that we should change. So when it has a dot like this, this simply means that you have a folder called assets, and inside of that assets folder is another folder called mod ID, and it's just squashing it together for you. So anyway, we're going to right-click that, rename it, we're going to change it from mod ID to first mod, since that's our mod ID, right? Cool. As well as here, you can see that it says mod ID .json, So right click that, rename first, first mod, first mod .json. So I know it's a lot, but you just have to do that every single time. You just have to rename everything, okay? But now what we want to do is check out the other file, which is the fabric.mod.json file. So open this up and we can see that this is the configuration file for our, our fabric mod, okay? So everything in here needs to align with what we have outside of the file. So first of all, we have the mod ID. We need to change this to first mod, since that's our mod ID. The version, that's gone from somewhere else, so you can ignore that. Um, the name of the mod, so we can customize this, so first mod. And then we can set a description for our mod as well, which is very nice. So this is our first mod created using the sample project. And then we set the author, so Illuminati. That's what I like to call myself. Okay, and then also we have some other stuff like contact homepage sources. So you can set this to uh, whatever website that you have maybe. So I'm gonna set mine to my YouTube channel. So youtube.com slash Cody Simpson. And for sources, this is also an optional one. So you can set this to whatever, you know, link to maybe a GitHub repository that you might have or just leave it, you know, empty or whatever. So I'm just going to, I'm going to leave it empty. I don't really care about that. So we can see that we have the assets dash mod ID dash icon provided here, which is red. Um, because this is not actually valid anymore, we changed it from mod ID to uh, first mod, right? So we're going to change that to first mod. 
and that's able to recognize it. And of course, if you just look at this, you may wonder, what is this for? This is just telling the Fabric mod configuration where to find the icon for the mod so that when we load the mod and install the mod, it actually has an icon, which is this one here. Pretty cool, right? It's provided to you by the GitHub repository that we cloned, okay? Anyway, so scroll down further. This is a very important one here. You have the entry points for your program. So the main entry point uh, specifies where you can find the main plugin class with the on initialize method. So this will be the first mod class within the me.codysimpson.first mod package. At the moment, you can see that it's actually correct just because um, the plugins that we have installed within IntelliJ automatically refactored it for us. But for you, it may not be correct. So make sure that this is actually the correct path. So whatever the package is and then the actual class name, okay? Make sure that aligns with whatever you have in your file sy system here, okay? And then we also have this one here, so make sure this also aligns with what you have here. So firstmod.mixins.json looks good to me. And that's it, so just make sure you go through the fabric.mod.json file and verify that everything is correct. And then we'll go back to this one here. So this one is also a important file just to make sure that it's correct. We're not gonna be using mixins like I said, but might as well make sure it's correct anyway. So the first thing that we're gonna do is change this base package here. So we're gonna change it to me.codysimpson.firstmod.mixin is actually giving us suggestions, which is nice. But now that will align with what we have here. So me.codysimpson.firstmod.mixin, pretty simple. And we also want to do it here. So me.codysimpson.firstmod.mixin, mixin.examplemixin. Oops, example mixin. One other thing that I've noticed is that this was left over from when we refactored it earlier. We don't need this, it's currently empty. So we're just gonna go ahead and delete it. No point in having that there. And yeah, that should be it pretty much for all the configuration that we need to do. Um, anything that you'll need to change most of the time is going to be in this fabric configuration file. For any dependencies or anything like that, it'll be in these Gradle files, but we're not going to touch that for now. We'll sh I'll show you how to do all that in the future. But yeah, the next thing that we need to do is actually make sure that our project compiles and we can actually test it out. So the easiest way to do that is actually just to use what we have up here. So go to edit configurations, go to application, select the client, click apply, click OK. And now we can test this out by running the Minecraft client within the IDE directly. So just give it a second. Hopefully it builds correctly with no errors. And here we go. looks like we got an error. So that's annoying, but let's go ahead and try and figure out why that happened. One second. Okay, so I found the issue and this actually makes sense. So before we had this uh, set to this and I was like, why is it red? That doesn't really make sense. So it's just because we set the wrong uh, stuff. So this part was correct. Just make sure you have it like you had it before. That's the correct path to the mix-in part of this application. And then here is where you specify simply the class name. So this one here for the mix-ins. So just go ahead and get rid of that and do example mix-in because that's what it's currently called. Um, we can rename this to first mod mix-in. That would actually make more sense. So first mod mix-in. There we go. And that will automatically refactor here. It may not do it for you. So make sure you do it yourself if you have to. And there we go. So if there's no red, it should be good. Again, make sure you have the right package set up for this here, the mix-in one, and then make sure you have the right class name specified within that package, okay? Anyway, so now go back up to here, click run, and it should uh, do everything correctly now. Okay, so it looks like it's running correctly. Um, our Minecraft game has popped up, which is nice. And then it says, hello, Fabric World, which we told it to say whenever the on initialize method is called, and that's always called when the mod first starts up, which is nice. So it looks like everything has been configured correctly and everything is working, which is very nice. One thing I'll do real quick is I'll show you again, like last episode, how to compile this into a jar file. So just go back up to here on your Gradle tab, go to build, then do build, right click that, run it. And now that should build it. So give that literally two seconds. It usually doesn't take very long. And whatever is generated from this will show up in the build folder. For some reason, it's not reloading and showing the updated generated files, but if you just right click this and do open in Explorer, you can see that inside of the build folder, there's now a libs folder. Open that up and you can find the jar file for your mod that you can provide to other people or install into your computer yourself. So there we go. This episode was actually shorter than I thought just because we already ran through a lot of the stuff last episode. So even if you want to set it up manually every single time, make sure you watch last episode because I gave a more detailed explanation on what certain things mean. So make sure you watch that. Very important. Hopefully you learned a lot in this episode as well though, how to you know, clone everything, set it up, get everything working, configure it. Um, yeah, pretty fun. All right, guys, so stay tuned for next episode where we're going to learn how to make custom items. All right, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. In the description below, I'll leave a link to the code for this episode so you can check it out. You can bookmark it, come back to it later. If you forget any concepts or you just want to review the concepts I taught in this video, I'll mark everything up with comments so you can come back and read the code without having to rewatch the video. Although your reviews are greatly appreciated. 
So yeah, I'll leave a link for that in the description below, so make sure to check it out. And uh, another thing is I'll leave a link to our Discord server. It's a big community for programmers, so you can ask for help on your programming projects if you're stuck on something, or maybe you can get some new friends. If you don't have any friends, there's lots of people here. It's growing really fast. You can get, uh, you can find lots of people who are passionate about the same things as you. For example, if you like Minecraft uh, Spigot development, uh, you can find people, lots of people who like that. If you like C++, if you like Java, if you like web development, it's a really, really big programming community. So uh, feel free to join. There's a link for that in the description below. And the last thing I want to tell you is that if you want to support this channel, you can click the join button below this video and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month and you can cancel at any time. You get some cool perks like early access to all of my new videos, a cool rank on my Discord server like you see right here on the side, YouTube members, and also you get to see yourself on the screen like you see right now. So if that sounds cool to you, feel free to join. If you don't want to, that's fine. If you can't, that's okay too. Um, I really just uh, appreciate you watching the video anyway. And uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. And that's it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.